Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Donkey Kong 64, and in the last episode, if you remember correctly, it's been a while, I know, but we finished up all of Chunky's backtracking, and in this episode, we're going to be coming back here to Frantic Factory, where we have a lot of stuff that we need to do. Uh, we only got a couple of golden bananas while we were here, and we got almost none of the other collectibles. So, in this episode, we're going to be seeing, you know, some more progress in this level. Um, to your answer, to answer your question, DJ Yoshi, no, this level is not that bad. It's just that my absence was due to a number of mitigating factors, including the sickness, which caused I had uh, strep throat for a while. That you know, I didn't want to try to record commentary with that, that because it was going to sound horrible. I also um, had a, a bad work schedule. Obviously, I work retail, so as re as somebody in the retail workplace. I'm a slave to the actions of the customers, which means that during the holiday season, my schedule is going to suck. So, you know, I finally found a small window where I can record. I'm going to see how much material I can get out of the hour or so I have before I have to go to work this afternoon. So, let's uh, see what progress we can get. We got, obviously, you saw me get the uh, Funkies pad over there. There's something over here for Lanky. There's a tag barrel. Um, we could do that, but I'm gonna try to- I'm gonna focus on Donkey for the time being. Roll a dice, and go ahead and jump up here. Now, like I said, this level is a bit tricky to navigate if you don't know your way around. Um, you know, if you don't have a map or something to look at, because almost all of the passages in between look the same. Thankfully, these doors are helpfully labeled. This is the research and development section. You can warp here from Banana Port 2 right at the entrance of the level. And there's actually, I believe there's a golden banana or a collectible here for all five Kongs. So it's actually a good idea to get here as soon as you can after you open this level up. Just because it's uh, a useful thing. And also this area has the key to uh, turning on the rest of the factory, which will enable us to go into the, um, you know, get most of the other collectibles here. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we can do without turning this factory on, but um, to obviously we're going to do 100% completion, which means that we have to uh, we have to turn the factory stuff on, be able to get up on top of the machinery, get the bananas that way. Okay, so in here you see the tiny barrel. Um, there's a thing for tiny in here, but there's also a lever here. Now, even though this area is labeled research and development, there really isn't anything research or development going on here. This goes ahead and opens up those grates. One has a banana port pad and one has some coins for Chunky. Um, we don't have anything else really to do here yet. So we'll go ahead and hit that guy, roll past him. But there, like I said, there is something that's important for Donkey to do here to open up this for the rest of, open up the rest of this level. Or at least a vital part of this level. As you can see here, we've got a banana balloon. That's a key. Usually if there are bananas in an area, that tells us um, that a Kong should go there. The coins are kind of random, but the, the bananas are definitely a clue that says, come here. You know. Especially banana balloons. Those are like gigantic sign waving in front of you. So this says danger high voltage, but thankfully there's no, actually no electricity in here. There's just some collectibles for us, some bananas, some coins, um, a lot of bananas. Up to 85 with Donkey already, and I think I know where the rest of them are. Then we go ahead and flip this switch. Who here remembers TVs that actually had that snow effect on them? I do. So that turns the factory main production line from standby to on. Which means that that big machiner bit machinery that we saw four or five episodes ago was offline, but now it's online. Which means that all of a sudden we can get up to the middle, we can get up to that big area up there. And that also opens up that grate. So we found ourselves another golden banana for Donkey. Excellent. Donkey's the one who's made the most progress in this level. That's why I wanted to take him out for a spin. It's because, um, obviously, he, we've done the most. He's the closest to being finished. But now that we've uh, turned the factory back on, I'm gonna actually going to switch over to Chunky and do some things for, for him in this room. This is 
In the last couple of videos, I was doing one Kong at a time per video. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna now is I'm just gonna go to each room and then focus on a Kong, focus on finishing all the things to do in that one room, and then uh, go on somewhere else. So this area is um, it's dark. Obviously, we can't see much. My original playing of this game, as I mentioned before, I really couldn't see anything. Hitting that switch makes the golden banana appear up there. Then um, you might think, well, how do we get that? Junkie can't jump that high. Well, if you hit those with the, your primate punch, it makes these pistons come up and down. And it also lights the room up very helpfully, which means that we can actually get up here now. Which is actually easier said than done because of those uh, robo zingers. There's also bananas up here for Junkie, which you're not going to want to miss. And these platforms do shut down over time. Um, they shut down. They do shut down though from the order shortest to tallest. So even if you're like right down to the wire, you still should be able to you know, clear the dirt mount. You still should be able to. Um, oh, that was cheap. You still should be able to reach the the final platform even after the lights start turning off. That's what I mean to say. Oh, it's so great to be playing this game again. I have been playing some other games in between uh, when I last recorded and now. Um, not really anything worth noting, though. No, I haven't like been practicing this game or anything. We just uh, reached, I recently got hold of an Xbox that I've been playing. Some uh, Call of Duty, which I'm not a big fan of. Some Halo, which I, Halo Reach, which is beginning to grow on me. But nothing really noteworthy. No new favorite games or anything like that. I haven't played any of the new games that have come out recently, like Skyrim or Battlefield 3 or Modern Warfare 3 or anything like that. Mostly because Skyrim, I might play sometime in the future, but right now I'm not really that interested. Um, and Battlefield 3 and Modern Warfare 3, I'm not a terribly big fan of first-person shooters in the first place, so I don't, um, I'm, I don't see myself playing those anytime soon. If if I do end up playing them, it's not going to be in. Um, for probably a couple of years after the price goes down or they go on sale on Steam or something like that. I'm just not one of those guys who runs out and buys a new game just because it's new, you know. Especially not Call of Duty. The, the, the Call of Duty a year thing is really starting to get on my nerves as a, a gamer. I really hate companies that think that they have to think that they can churn out a game year after year and people will buy it even if it's absolutely the same every year and the worst part is that right now not only are they doing that but they're right they can because every call of duty game regardless of if it's even worth playing is making them millions of dollars and i really really wish that wasn't true i wish that there were more games with more innovation this tiny little more innovation to them that were being made that were being uh, bought i mean like even skyrim looks like it has some great great little tweaks and things in it that other rpgs just don't have that huge you know obviously i've never played an oblivion game but it just looks phenomenal to me, just to be able to wander around and just, you know, look off in the distance, see mountains, and actually be able to go to those mountains just by walking. That just sounds so awesome to me. And then, you know, the fact that it's got next-gen graphics, I mean, they're not the awesomest graphics, but they're certainly graphics that wouldn't have been possible just a couple of years ago. It's just remarkable to me that the technology in gaming today, considering that I'm such a retro gamer, I love these old games like this so much, you know, I, I get, I fr I'm freshly astounded by what's available in the gaming market today every time I look at an advertisement for a new game, or even like a walkthrough of a new game. Games like Skyrim, games like Modern Warfare 3, games like Battlefield 3, you guys, you kid, kids today just have no appreciation for, you know, how awesome the games that they have are. They're willing to tear a game apart for a bit of tearing in the graphic design, you know, just a bit, or like a, if the ragdoll doesn't quite go the way that they think it should go, if, you know, it's, it's just, it's almost sad how willing to take for granted 
people are today, the, the astonishing quality that comes out of video games. Every once in a while, there's a bad, bad game that makes people appreciate the good games even more, but even then, there's still a degree of ungratefulness about the gaming industry, about people like people who buy every new Call of Duty game and think that all the other shooters in, that ever come out suck because they're not Call of Duty. I play, the only first person shooters that I've played in depth are Star Wars games. I played a bit of, um, I played some of Modern Warfare, but all, only like over land. And I played. I have never. I have never played a Halo game until I've just recently picked up Breach. Um, I've only played Black Ops a little bit, mostly the campaign. I I played very little of the multiplayer. Um, the only other first per, first person shooter that I even really play all that much is Left 4 Dead, and I don't even play it because it's a first person shooter. I play it because it's fun, because it's different. Because it's, it's, it's not like a zombie game where you're trying to survive. It's a fun, it's a fun game. It's, it's just fun to play. It's more of an, you know, an adventure with friends than it is about survival or without, about shooting the enemies. You know, even if you just go online and play with strangers, it's still fun. People connect over Left 4 Dead, I find, better than they kill uh, connect over left over, over Call of Duty, certainly. You know, Call of Duty, the game is full. Of, it seems like the multiplayer is always full of people who are just you know who spam, grief, who use grenade launchers, who use noob tubes, things like that. And you know, in a game like Left 4 Dead, it doesn't. I don't see it happen all that much. Maybe it's because I don't play very many competitive games. In, on Left 4 Dead, but maybe the ability to actually sort between the competitive games and the non-competitive ones is something that more uh, gaming gaming things, especially the sports one, especially the shooters and things like that, should embrace more. Let's see, where do I need to go with Tiny? Not up there. Up here. But, um, yeah, there's so many... It just seems like there's so many mediocre games coming out today that are basically the same thing with a few tweaks. I mean, there's been a battle, there's been a, a, a Call of Duty game every year for what, four years now? And, you know, aside from alternating every other year between the two development companies and the changes in content that that creates, you know, there's really not that much difference. I do play the games. I have played the Call of Duty is going back to Modern Warfare. I played them every year since then. And um, I still don't game. really enjoy it that them that much. Okay, this minigame, Crazy Kong Clamor. Shoot the golden banana, just don't hit any of the Kongs. This is a reaction time test. Press A to fire. What you gotta do is snap to where the banana is and fire as fast as you can every time that it pops on screen. Because once it goes dark, you have like a split, a, a millisecond after it goes dark for the banana to actually, the hit on the banana to actually count. You can hit the Kongs, but it'll just make your score go back by one. So like if I were, if I were to hit one now, it would go to two instead of one. Well this is actually one of the hardest mini games in the game as it goes on. Obviously, it's a reaction time game, so what's, what, what's the measurement gun for that going to be? Well, it's going to be reaction time. You're going to have, you know, times where it's going to be incredibly short. You literally have only a split millisecond to react before hitting the button. Alright, so after that long-winded rant about games today and kids today with their games that they can't, that they take for granted and everything like that, I think I'm going to pause now and let you guys off here with about a 15-minute video, and then uh, I'll see you guys next time on Let's Play Donkey Kong 64, where we're going to go through more of Frantic Factory. See you later, folks.